I believe a vaccine is the ultimate weapon against coronavirus. We optimistically estimate that vaccines can reach markets in October, November or by the end of the year. By that time, I believe our businesses will rebound rapidly. Hello, I'm Tom McKenzie in Shanghai. Fosun has been one of China's most acquisitive conglomerates, buying up businesses in finance, healthcare, travel, even an English football club. The aim to build out an international ecosystem primed for China's burgeoning middle class. But those ambitions have faced challenges. China's economy is growing at the slowest pace in decades. Global lockdowns to contain the virus have hammered Fosun's travel business, while rising tensions with the US have cast a shadow over its expansion plans. But Fosun says it's positioning to weather the storm and emerge even stronger. It's betting heavily on a COVID-19 vaccine. It's doubling down on its domestic market and it's once again eyeing overseas acquisitions. This is my conversation with the co-founder and chairman of Fosun, Guo Guangcheng. You co-founded the business in 1992. That was at a time when China's economy was just a fraction of the size of America's economy. It was tiny. It was dominated by state-owned enterprises. What was your vision for Fosun back in 1992? So, uh, we, of course, had a dream, a vision, and a value called self-improvement, teamwork, performance, contribution to society. We hoped we could help build industries with our efforts. But we were also very realistic. At the beginning of our entrepreneurship, we just wanted to feed ourselves, to live. So we came to today step by step. Fosun's way of doing business is to look at the future, but also to keep every step steady. When reflecting on the old days, we were a company without much competitiveness, but we kept learning. We had a grand sense of values and vision. More importantly, we are down to earth. We learn step by step. We are grateful that China has provided room for us to learn, enhance and develop. Over the past 40 years since the reform and opening, I'd like to say that we have become a big fish, as the Chinese economy has become an ocean. I mean, you've overseen a business that has grown significantly, of course, over the last 30 years in a country that has gone through incredible change. What were the biggest challenges that you faced building this business in the early days? I think the biggest challenge and the biggest opportunity are the same thing. The market is very big, but it changes very quickly. The starting point for everyone is not high. So the challenge is whether you can seize the opportunity. Opportunity lies at the point where you can do better and faster than others through learning. So I think over the past 28 years since Fosun was founded, we don't count on what we already have, but on whether we can keep improving the organization to adapt to the market, to the needs of our customers, to have a sense of industrial change. Put simply, everything changes very fast, but opportunities keep popping up. It depends on whether you are strong enough, quick enough. Take the pandemic as an example. No one could foresee it. No country could foresee it. China couldn't foresee it either. It's pointless to blame anyone. It's meaningless for any country to blame another. What is meaningful is how we work together to react more quickly. When you first started out, you're a private business, of course, and when you first started out, the economy here was dominated by state-owned enterprises. Now, SOEs are less dominant, but they're being revived and being made more competitive. How challenging has it been to compete as a private company against state-owned companies that benefit from subsidies and cheap land and favorable contracts, for example? I think SOEs indeed have advantages over private companies in some areas. For instance, they have lower fundraising costs because they have government endorsement, but they also have shortcomings. For example, they have less flexibility and efficiency than private companies. On the other hand, SOEs and private companies focus on different sectors, so they are not in absolute competition. 
大家聚焦的领域可能不是很一样。国企和民企并不是说一个绝对的竞争的关系。The country has left plenty of room for private companies to grow and develop. In this respect, China, being such a huge market, has also left huge room for foreign companies. 中国的话，这么巨大的市场也为外企提供了巨大的空间。虽然这个部分领域还是国有企业。Though some sectors are dominated by SOEs, I think the market is big enough and diverse enough to leave enough room for private companies and foreign companies as well. You've pulled the trigger on dozens of acquisitions over the years in finance, healthcare, travel. You've even bought an English football club. What is the deal that you're most proud of? I like every single deal we've made, and I'm very proud of them. That's why I made them. I have to make very prudent decisions, because we need money to complete those deals. When doing business or making overseas acquisitions, it's neither for my personal interest nor for my pride, but it's to achieve a better business model, better brands and better technology, along with providing better service to our customers when working with those companies. As you said, we've invested in an English Premier League football club. For us, it's an investment to enhance governance. It's not because I like soccer, so it's for my personal interest to do this. Everything is considered from a business perspective. But, on the other hand, I've become passionate about soccer as I made that investment. I had never woken up at 3 a.m. to watch a soccer game, but now I will wake up at 3 a.m. for a game and go back to bed at 5 a.m. If Wolves come to you and say, we need, we need more funding because of the impact of the pandemic, would you consider adding additional funds into the club? We would assess the actual needs of the development of the football club on the basis of facts. But so far, I'm very happy that they told me they are still strong in terms of funds. They don't need additional investment from us. Coming up, a government crackdown, a slowing economy and the coronavirus. The co-founder of Fosun on how they're adapting to the pandemic, how close they are to a vaccine and his outlook for growth in China. We are recovering quickly and Fosun's business is very resilient. Our balance sheet is quite healthy. We believe that the recovery will be quick later on. For you, stood out. What are the key takeaways from the first half earnings for you? The interim result does not reach our expectations due to the impact of COVID. It's mainly about two aspects. First is the virus impact on tourism. For example, it has relatively big impact on our retail. Second, the economic uncertainty has hurt some of our financial investments. But fortunately, we are recovering quickly, and Fosun's business is very resilient. Our balance sheet is quite healthy. We believe that the recovery will be quick later on. When do you expect profits to return to pre-pandemic levels? <laughs> I believe that will be soon. We believe it will return to normal next year. So as you look ahead to the end of 2020 and as you look ahead to 2021, what parts of the business, what parts of the portfolio of Fosun do you think are going to outperform and which areas of the business will remain challenging? The broader healthcare business of our group will develop more quickly as we've invested in research and development for 12 years. In terms of fighting against coronavirus, our nucleic acid detection kit, our negative pressure ambulance, our ventilators have been well developed, and especially our vaccine cooperation with Germany is making good progress. Talking about challenges, our tourism and retail will keep facing pressure, as the virus has not been controlled well overseas. 
but I believe a vaccine is the ultimate weapon against coronavirus. We optimistically estimate that vaccines can reach markets in October, November or by the end of the year. By that time, I believe our businesses will rebound rapidly. Fosun Pharma is working with BioNTech in Germany to bring a vaccine, a COVID-19 vaccine, to the Chinese market. What is the time frame for getting a working vaccine available for Chinese citizens? So far, all the data are satisfactory and processes are fast. We've started the clinical trials in China. We will soon start a bridging study. We hope China will get the vaccines at the same time as Germany, the US, along with Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan. Optimistically, the vaccines should be able to be used commercially in October, November. How are you thinking about pricing the vaccine? In terms of pricing, we will definitely consider the cost, but more importantly, making profit is not the only purpose. I think it would come from negotiation from all sides, including the government. I believe it would be an issue, but it won't be the biggest issue, as the price will be affordable to most people. Shortly after I last interviewed you back in 2016, towards the end of 2016, uh, the Chinese government started to restrict capital outflows and there was a lot of focus on conglomerates like Ambang and H&A and Wanda and also Fosun. But you came out of it relatively well. You were allowed to continue to make deals. What were the lessons and the takeaways from that period for you and how did it change the strategy? The government has never stopped Fosun from making regular international investments. I don't know the reasons behind those companies that were impacted, but for Fosun, all of our projects were approved by the government. China is the world's second largest economy. It doesn't make sense to only allow others to invest in China, but no Chinese investment abroad. Dual circulation means we should welcome foreign companies to invest here in China. As I said earlier, China has a huge market. More global companies can participate in China's internal economy, while at the same time, Chinese companies will definitely go to the global market and cooperate internationally. It's very natural to see international investment and cooperation. On this front, I think the Chinese government is very open-minded and hopes more good Chinese companies will develop and cooperate abroad as it welcomes more foreign companies to China. The reason that Fosun came out quite well is because you've been much more rational about your acquisitions and your leverage, your debt, was lower than many of the other conglomerates. Those are key parts of your strategy that allowed you to look past this period. We've maintained the prudence of our balance sheet even amid the pandemic. No matter whether we have investments abroad, which is the strategy we should always follow. Secondly, in terms of overseas investment, we will focus more on the areas and sectors we are currently in to strengthen our businesses. Of course, Fosun has made some overseas investments into sectors in which we had not invested since 2008 when we took some new industrial positions. But even back then, we started with small stakes when we entered some areas. So we are always a rational investor. We don't want to show off how much money we have or how big the investment is. We always concentrate on how much value we can create for our clients, what we can bring to those companies when we cooperate with them. Even before the pandemic, China's economy was growing at the slowest pace in decades. How has that changed your focus? We should attach more importance to the quality of growth instead of just maintaining the growth rate at 8 or 9 percent. The Chinese government is very clear about that and understands that very well. I think it would be beneficial for the global economy and the Chinese economy if growth could remain at around 5 or 6 percent or even lower for the long term. It's always a good thing to maintain stable long-term growth. It's the same for Fosun. We've seen that growth is not only about the speed of change, but also the change of structure and quality. 
The entire world is changing, global consumption is changing, so Fosun has been changing along with it. We invest more in health, that's why we set the direction of our products towards online health and family, so we keep changing with our customers. Fosun has a shared cultural value on eight things, and top of the eight things is customer comes first. Anything we do is to better serve our customers. You've got businesses across multiple sectors, of course. What is your sense, looking at those businesses, of the state of China's economy right now? First of all, Fosun indeed covers a wide range of businesses, but we concentrate on family consumption, health, happiness, wealth, so our business is very focused. Particularly in recent years, we have become more and more focused. Secondly, I'm very confident in China's economy. China has a large middle class, so there's huge domestic demand. Also, China's industrial chain is very strong in global competition. For the future, our Chinese business will still be the priority and the most important for Fosun. We sense that there is huge growth potential. This is not only for Fosun, but for all global companies. The Chinese market is an inevitable, essential part of the business. Up next, as the US and China edge closer to what some are calling a new Cold War, what will the impact be on international groups like Fosun? How is it hoping to shift and shape finance, healthcare and travel in the years ahead? The chairman of the company gives us his vision for the future, the challenges and the opportunities. We're obviously seeing tensions between Beijing and Washington rising. And there's also trade friction between Beijing and Australia, Canada, also India. How much of a headwind are those tensions for a business like yours? I don't believe some extreme voices we hear during the election campaign can represent the future of the US-China relationship. I believe they will find a solution in future. Fosun complies with local laws in our global positions. We are very friendly to local communities, so all of our investment and business development are welcomed. In terms of investment, we will focus more on strengthening our industry in the future instead of expansion. So we will concentrate on strengthening our existing businesses in regions we are already in. Do you personally worry about the direction of travel of the relationship between the US and China? I do have concerns as China-US relations are so important to the world. It doesn't only impact on China and the US, but around the globe. But I still have confidence, even with those concerns. I believe the leadership of the two countries have wisdom. The peoples of the two countries have wisdom. They should be able to manage the competitive relationship, and they will find a balance point in future. What's the future of travel? post-pandemic. We're seeing domestically China's travel industry is picking up quite significantly. You've seen examples of that with your own business. But the airlines, for example, globally have been absolutely hammered. So what is the future, do you think, of the sector? So far, we see that it's been dominated by domestic travel. In Europe, taking our club meds as an example, they've seen mostly domestic travelers or travelers from some European countries. But I don't believe this will last for long. I hope everything can go back to normal. So I look forward to the vaccines. I look forward to the world going back to normal. The broader business, you've got debt to capital ratio of about 56%. That's increased a little bit. It's not at dangerously high levels. Are you comfortable with debt levels at around that ratio? And are you looking to raise additional funds either via stock insurance or bond issuance or loans? We will maintain a prudent financial policy, so we are comfortable with the existing debt ratio. We won't aggressively change our financial strategy, but of course, we won't be too conservative. 
Over the past few years, we've tried to find a balance between investment and debt, which means we have investments, but we also have exits. In terms of regions and currencies, we have financing in the Chinese yuan in mainland China and financing in US dollars overseas. That gives us more and safer sources of funds. One of the most important development strategies for Fosun's future is to maintain prudent finance and adequate cash flow. We've talked about some of your successful acquisitions, whether that's Wolves or Club Med or in the healthcare space. But there have been some acquisitions that haven't worked out. Thomas Cook failed last year. Cirque du Soleil, you lost your investment there. How have you been thinking about some of those failed investments? And how can you offset some of the risks of those overseas investments in the future? There will always be successes and failures in investments. Taking the respectful Mr. Warren Buffett as an example, his investments cannot always be successful. I'm satisfied with our overall investments. They've established Fosun's industrial foundation to concentrate on family consumption, health, happiness, wealth. We've obtained a worldwide ecosystem. We are successful on this front. Now our investment focus is on strengthening our business in the regions we are already in and in sectors that we are already familiar with. So in this respect, we will have a higher probability of successful investments in the future. Are you in the market for acquisitions? Fosun always walks with two legs, so to speak. One is industrial operations, the other is to strengthen our industries through acquisitions. Investment and acquisition is one of our basic businesses. So there are always different teams looking at different deals, looking at the opportunities. Which parts of the world, as you look out across the globe, look most enticing to you right now as an investment opportunity? We have taken a position in Brazil. We are optimistic about its future development. Southeast Asia is somewhere we don't have strong investment, but we will strengthen there. Apart from that, Fosun's artisan, the treatment for malaria, has made a great contribution in Africa. There, it is called almighty medicine. I think Africa has been facing a huge challenge, in particular from this coronavirus pandemic. We hope we can do more for Africa. What are the biggest risks that you see in the future? As a company, you have to face all kinds of uncertainties, but you should prepare for those uncertainties. As I said earlier, nobody could foresee the coronavirus pandemic. Nobody could foresee such a big change in the US-China relationship, and nobody could foresee the rapid development of technology, meaning the vaccine would come far earlier than anyone could expect. It is God's job to predict what will happen in the future. We can't do that. What we can do is to make our organization stronger, to make the capability of global cooperation stronger, to make our scientific research faster, and to make us unite closer. Where do you hope Fosun to be 10 years from now? Fosun has a plan to grow 10 times in 10 years. We hope in the next decade, our overall business will see 10 times growth big growth in the customers we are serving. More importantly, we will also bring them better products and better services. That was a conversation with Fosun's Guo Guangchan. I'm Tom McKenzie. This is Bloomberg.